Welcome back. In the last session, we have briefly di discussed the most important Torch libraries. Today, we are going to have a look, uh, to have a closer look at the Torch library, which is uh, Py, uh, which is the PyTorch Tensor library. So, how to create a tensor? It's very simple with PyTorch. So, first of all, you create an uh, object which is a vector or a matrix. And then you pass this object to a tensor class as, a, uh, as an argument. So you see here we have created one, uh, one vector uh, of 1, 2 and 3. And then we are, we are passing this vector as, uh, as argument here uh, for the torch class. The same thing, uh, the same thing with the 2 by 3 matrix and uh, higher dimensional object like uh, tensor of 3 by 3 by 3. This is the same and here we are creating a bigger tensor which has dimension of, of 4 by 3 by 3 by 3. So let us execute this uh, cell. And here we see <coughs> it has indeed created a tensor of size 3 which is a float tensor. You can see here torch float tensor. And the second operation has created a, a tensor of dimension of size 3 by 3, uh, 2 by 3, sorry. And here we, we have created a tensor of size 3 by 3 by 3. And last one, of course, it has dimension 4 by 3 by 3 by 3. It's simple and straightforward. Uh, now we're going to discuss the question of multi-dimensional tensors. It's actually important because we are dealing a lot in PyTorch uh, and not, uh, uh, not only with PyTorch but also with another uh, frameworks like Keras. We are dealing with highly dimensional tensors. So how can we understand it? For for lower dimensional objects, it's uh, it's pretty straightforward. Uh, here we're indexing into a vector, which is uh, which was uh, actually tensor of size three. So now, if we indexing into this vector, into this tensor of size three, and getting the first uh, the first element with the index zero, we're getting just a scalar. Here we are indexing into a actually matrix, but it's not a matrix. It's, a, it's now a tensor with uh, with dimension two by three. So we are getting here first element with uh, index zero, and this first element is by itself a tensor which has size three. It's actually a, a vector, a column vector. You can see it at column vector. Here we are indexing into a tensor of dimension 3 by 3 by 3 or size 3 by 3 by 3 and here we are getting a matrix out of it. It's not a matrix, it's a tensor of size 3 by 3. And last one we are getting uh, an object, a tensor, a float tensor of size 3 by 3 by 3. Geometrically speaking it's uh, a cube actually. So, but let, let us see on uh, this picture what it is. It's actually, uh, I have tried to represent a 4D tensor. If we have sliced into the dimension into, into this 4D tensor, we got out of it a cube actually. It's a, a tensor of size 3 by 3 by 3. So you see here three colors, it's uh, just uh, for fun. <laughs> and uh, you, uh, you can see here three cubes. And this whole image is actually a, a, a representation of 4D tensor. So the fourth dimension you can see as a container for the tensors of, of dimension minus one of lower dimension. Like if you have an object, uh, if you have a tensor which has a, a size of 
4 by 3 by 3 by 3. So you have the highest dimension is 4. So this fourth dimension is actually a container. You, you can see it as, uh, as, a, uh, as a container for the tensors of lower dimension. Like uh, in our case, we have here cubes, like three cubes, and we can s slice into this, uh, into this uh, tensor and we're getting out an uh, object, uh, an, uh, a tensor of dimension three by three by three. It's, uh, uh, I think it's pretty important to be able to vi visualize at the beginning some basic structures if we deal with higher dimensional objects. So later on, we, you, you will deal with uh, uh, this stuff with the higher dimensional objects and you, you, you will don't need to visualize it uh, continuously. But uh, it's important uh, to have this um, un understanding and I hope I can uh, I I could bring it a little bit closer to you. So enjoy our sessions. See you then. Bye bye.